Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, once again, I'm answering a few of your questions, such as, is the GP Laureato going to go up along with the Nautilus and the Royal Oak? What do I think is better value for money, Tudor or Omega? And which GMT function Rolex would I pick if I were to buy one? All that and more in today's video. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing the Seiko SKX, a watch I haven't worn in at least six months. I'm actually heading to Mexico City tomorrow, um, mainly for pleasure. You know, I have a birthday I have to attend, but I'm also going to try and do a little business while I'm there. And the SKX is the perfect watch for the job. As fatally flawed as it is, it's an icon and I absolutely love it and it's going to do the job perfectly well. Also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. I actually do have some very special pieces that got, came in today. We have a Rolex Daytona Panda with the new green card. And it is the cheapest new card Daytona in the world, bar none. Is it still expensive? Yes, the Daytona market's high, but it is the cheapest new card Daytona on the market at Delray Watch. We have the Zenith Chronomaster 1969 38mm watch, extremely hard to get, extremely hard to find, and we just got one in. And an Azimuth Arigato Mr. Roboto, Mr. Roboto number two. Very, very interesting watch geek watch. Not for everybody, but at the very least, give it a click and check it out. All at DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below. All right, guys, you know the spiel. These are your questions. So if I'm looking down, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just reading them out. And they are in no particular order. The first one is from Damien Ross Real Estate. Hey, Fed, you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, Damien. With Nautilus and Royal Oak prices skyrocketing and the overflow affecting the overseas, is the Laureato line next? Well, the Gerard Perigo Laureato has already gone up in value. Uh, Gerard Perigo has already closed down dealers. They're harder to get gray market. And the Laureatos have definitely gone up in value. Anywhere near as much as the Nautilus or the Royal Oak? No. But lucky for us, it's actually my favorite of all of them. I prefer the design. I own one myself. It's got an in-house movement. I say Laureatos are still a great deal. And they are indeed going up. Andres RCF. Hey, Fed. Quick note. How does consignment of high-value pieces $100,000 and up usually work regarding dealer's fee length and do dealers sort of list the content? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is a Delray watch, and in most dealers, if the watch isn't in our possession, it's not consignment. We request that the customer send us the watch and we keep it in our safe because, God forbid, we sell the watch, we handshake a deal, and a customer backs out, we look Awful. I will not do any deal if the watch is not in my possession or the possession of a dealer I know. Private clients must send us the watch. Now, everybody's got different kind of terms. Us at Delray Watch, we request a 60-day minimum, meaning if we make an agreement and you send us the watch, you give us at least 60 days to sell it. If you want to recall the watch, before 60 days, then we request you cover all shipping, insurance, and photography fees. Uh, and then generally, the markup, I mean, depends. We don't work on a percentage. Um, we tell them, listen, you're going to get 100000 and anything above that, I'll keep. Now, I might list it at 110 115 105 200 Doesn't matter. I negotiate a price first with the customer, and I tell them, Anything above that, I keep. Generally, $100,000, um, you know, dealers tend to make 15% on something like that. If I really like the guy, 10%, but anywhere between 10 to 20% is usually what to expect. Kanawati Diego, Tudor versus Omega, value for money? Omega all day long. 
I'm not a Tudor hater. I actually prefer a lot of Tudor designs to Omega designs. But the Omega movements are finished better. They have more features. Uh, Omega cases are finished better. Omega's a higher end brand. And it's not all that much more expensive than Tudor, even though generally it is more expensive than Tudor. But you get what you pay for in this case. Tudor still being a great watch. Eduardo Martabit. Hey, Fed. Uh, if you had a chance to buy a Rolex with a GMT function through your AD, would you choose to take an Explorer 2 quicker or go for a Pepsi or Batman? Pepsi or Batman all day long. Apart from the fact they're worth more money, I think they're more handsome. I highly dislike the new Explorer 2. I love the 40 millimeter old one. I think that was massively undervalued, uh, even though they've come up quickly, but I would definitely go for a Pepsi or a Batman. Roberto watches you. What will you do in the event of a market crash? Bulk sell your inventory or hold until you can? And are you afraid of overpaying for inventory even though things are currently selling? Robert, this is a fantastic question. I can't speak for all dealers, but I try and keep a very big amount of cash on hand for things like that. I will never, ever bulk sell my inventory if I don't have to. I will hold for as long as my money permits, and then I will slowly start decreasing prices until I find the sweet spot and I can still sell at a profit. Delray Watch and most dealers are not in business to take losses. I guess I'll, I'll do it if I have to, if it's about survival, but as long as I don't have to, I'm going to scratch and claw to make sure I hold on and still make a profit. After all, this is how I pay my bills, this is how business is done, and I will not panic. Anyway guys, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.